20. Okay, we're going to get started off. We're going to be talking about the Jadges. The L.A. Chargers, it's the same story as the San Diego Chargers. Mm -hmm. They just can't hold on to a game in the fourth quarter. I kind of want to hear your take on this because is what's the problem? Is it Anthony Lynn? Is it just a curse? What is going on that they just cannot find a way to win games at the end? Well, you know, the first thing is there's no such thing as curses. You know, took one out of the uh, old Friday Night Lights movie quote. Even though I'm like one that does like see the idea of curses but i don't think it's a curse man i just think it's a little mixture of everything like bad luck definitely just the inability to close out games is very is very known with this team and it's been like that for years now do i fully blame anthony lynn and the coaching staff no but like they gotta take some kind of blame don't like it's just Especially, like, if you go from last year and this year, they just keep on blowing games late. And it's just, at this point, like, maybe you need a culture change in that locker room. I think Anthony Lynn's a good guy, knows the game very well. But, like, if you're establishing, if I'm a player in that locker room and we're up a couple scores in, in the second half, I'm thinking it's, like, we're only up three because, like, no lead is safe with us. And the way to fix that is, you know, number one thing that comes to my head is just go on and completely tear it down, you know, get rid of like the GM coach and just restructure everything and do a complete whole identity change and see if that helps you. But who knows if that's the problem? Is it, it, they're in that just weird situation where, like, you know, it's a talented team. You expect them to compete more at what they're doing. I mean, if they win these games that they've been choking away, I mean, they're right in the thick of this little playoff in the AFC. And it's, it's, it's a tough aspect because, like, it's one of those things, like, when you're sitting there watching it as a fan, it makes no sense. And it's not like a true, real answer out there why they. Well, at least to me, why they're choking away these games. Like, I would have to sit down and really watch Chargers film, like, for hours and be like, well, okay, like, I mean, is it their defense? Are they just not doing something right here, personnel? I mean, but I think I would put a little blame on the head coach just solely because at the end of the day, like, winning the game is your job. And if you're just not getting it done, you're finding ways to lose games and you're not one of those franchises that – when in doubt, like if they're down, they're up just by a little, they'll figure out a way to win. And they're on the complete opposite side of the spectrum where they look to find a way to lose a game. So I don't know. Something's got to change in that organization to me. Yeah, that's actually – I was you kind of stole my point there is that I think just – because the NFL is such a tight league, it's, it's super competitive. You know, every season you see it's just – some teams are just a game or two out of the playoffs that definitely deserve to be playoff teams and sometimes vice versa. But to be a good team in the NFL, you have to find, be able to find a way to win football games. And, and I think you just look at some of the top tier organizations in the league, right? Seattle, I think, is a great example. Um, maybe like Pittsburgh and Baltimore and, and Kansas City now. And these are just teams that, when it, when it comes down to crunch time, and not that this happens every week in every game, but when it's the end of the football game, they find ways to win or keep it close and, and put themselves in winning positions. And the Chargers have, you know, they're close. Like you said, they're, they're in these games at the end, but they're not able to foot that, put that exclamation point and, and come out of these games with wins. And you know, going back to what you think the problem is, I, I think it. you're right. A little bit of that blame has to be on the head coach because win, lose, or draw, the head coach takes full responsibility for everything. And, you know, lo looking at that game, I mean, you're up 21-3, to three, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. um, in that game. And then Phillip Lindsay busts a big rushing touchdown. Like, offensively, you know, you could have had some more production. I know they had some turnovers. Defensively, I think, is is the obvious one, giving up a, a pass interference, I'm pretty sure, on third down with three seconds left, then one second left. Like, 
So you just give the Broncos a play at the one yard line to, to allow them to win the game. Like you just can't do that. But I, I mean, I do think that you have to put this on Anthony Lynn just because the team is too talented to not just to lose that game, but the past couple of seasons just to lose the way that they did. And then I think a lot of people remember the playoff game too, when they got absolutely embarrassed. Um, by the Patriots. Yeah. By the Patriots. So like I, I, and I feel for Anthony Lynn because I really don't think he's a bad coach. At the end of the day, if you were if you were to rank out all the coaches in the league, I don't think he's top ten, but I'm also not sure he's bottom ten either. So it, it, he, you know, I think the chart in general spot because you can't you can't say oh we need to get rid of him, but you also can't say oh well Anthony Lynn he's done a great job I really trust him at the end of the game. So they're they're in a yeah. weird spot, um, but I do think with Justin Herbert. Because, once again, going back to those, okay, these are organizations that find ways to win at the end, a lot of them have a quarterback that you can trust. And once you get Justin Herbert with some more experience under his belt, he knows the offense a little bit better. If there's those drives, especially compared to Phillip Rivers, where you need a, a score, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown with Justin Herbert, where he has the ball two minutes left, I you know, just from from early – early tape and, and, and early playing from Justin Herbert, you know, he's about halfway through his first NFL season, man, he looks like a guy that can really rip the football and, and be a guy that can be that franchise quarterback. You can trust with, with little time left game on the line. Well, that's one thing about this whole, little, like the chargers, um, Chugging away leads is that, you know, like I see like an out where they complain like the rookie quarterback kind of, but like Herbert's playing pretty excellent and playing far above everyone's standards. But this has been a known problem for the Chargers, even when they have Phillip Rivers. I mean, they blew leads or had a chance to win a game last year, and we all knew Phillip Rivers choking and throwing interceptions in the last two minutes. It, the problem could something be as simple as like, you know, it, it, like Phil Lindsay busting that big run, that's a momentum change there, you know. Like if they 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 allow the other team get back in it and give them the feeling like, hey, we can do this. You know, it's all nice and dandy to go up big up on a team. But if you're not able to withhold that lead and you know, you get some questionable calls or something, and I just think they always are able to bring the other team back to life a little bit and Momentum plays huge swings, like in sports and especially in the NFL, too. And these are professional players. They're not going to quit unless they're playing for the Jets. And, like, I, it could be something as simple as that. Like, I, that comes back to, like, coaching, like, with discipline or whatever. But I, if I'm the Chargers and I'm in that locker room, I'm saying it doesn't matter if we're up 24 nothing or 3 nothing. you got to treat it like you're, it's a tied ball game and go at 100%. Because they're not one of those teams like a Steelers, Ravens, Chiefs. When they're up big, they can play at probably 80%, 75%, and save like save people in the tank for later on games. Because, like, first of all, I think it comes on with like better coaching and just not better all-around players, but just, like, the presence of knowing where they are in the game. Like, I feel like the Chargers are a type of team, they're up big they still have to fire in all cylinders or they're going to lose the game. And that could just be simply their identity. Um, one last thing I want to bring up that I feel about the Chargers before we move on is that you know, I'm a big Bill Walsh guy. I've read a couple of his books. I highly recommend them because they are just really informational about football and, and you know, from a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. And he said in one of his books, I forget exactly which one, that basically the most powerful part of your roster, which you would not expect, is that bottom 25% for a couple of reasons. One, you know, once it's late in the season and you really need to rely on some guys, like you're never going to have a season without injuries and without problems. And it's these guys that at the weirdest times and at crucial times especially – are the ones that have to step up and make plays a lot of the times. And mm -hmm. in facets of the game, you wouldn't expect things like special teams, you know, 
rotational plays like in the third quarter where your your starting guys are tired and they need to be subbed out. So maybe you know your your star running back, your star receiver took a a hard hit on a second down, and all of a sudden you're a, you're in a third and seven, and you have you know your your fourth or fifth receiver out there that needs to make a play. So and he also argued that they they have a large influence on the locker room. If you don't have these bottom these bottom guys, then that trickles into the top guys where, okay, if these bottom guys really believe in the coaching staff and really believe in the atmosphere and buy in, then everyone will buy in just that little bit more that you need. And the chargers are just one of these teams that I just have to question whether or not they have that bottom 25% of their roster with them, because this has happened year after year after year where you know, they'll have leads, like you said, and blow them. And, you know, they'll be able to come back in some games and fall just short and just little ways to lose here and there. So I I have to beg the question, especially because we looked at their roster coming into the season. A, is the bottom 25% of their roster good enough? And B, are these guys buying in? You know, watching the Anthony Lynn hard knocks, I think they are bought in, but I'm not sure they're talented enough, at least across the board. You know, especially on the defensive side of the football, this Chargers team is always losing. You know, they've lost Derwin James the past two years. Um, they just traded away King, their corner, who supposedly was, was you know, a locker room hazard. But, like, you look at their starting lineup every year and you say, oh, man, this is this is really good. Like, they have a whole lot of talented players. They always have a couple of new additions, you know, some some good draft picks and whatnot. But do they have the entire team? You know, I'm a big Steelers fan. You can see the sign right here now. First time you can see the uh, Steelers fan parking only. But I took my Falcon stuff off. <laughs> like, the Steelers, especially under Mike Tomlin, have just always been – next man up it doesn't matter injuries if you have you know an a b pulling a crazy person next man up and they live by that they don't just say it they live by it and the example i can bring up you see last week against the ravens isaiah bugs a former sixth or seventh round pick makes a huge play on fourth down to stop lamar jackson in the red zone and give us the football to set us up for a win two weeks ago Robert Spillane stepped up for uh, for an injured Devin Bush, makes a huge hit on Derrick Henry, has a big game, has had some interceptions, and has really turned the tide for this defense and made some really big plays. When do you see this out of, out of the Chargers consistently, this next man up? So I, I think that that's the, one of the main problems I have with the Chargers at face value. Like you said, we... We're going to be doing a, a a healthy dive into into why the Chargers are charging these games all the time, but from face value, yeah. I think that that's one of the big problems with them. Yeah, that that's a good point. Their their bottom half of the roster is definitely not as lead as the teams you made, and it's a good point because like if you look at like some talented top top end teams, like talented teams that are not doing well, like the Falcons, Cowboys, Chargers. Like, their top-end talent is very well, and they should, like, on paper, you're like, these teams should do, be doing better than they are. But, like, if you have a lot of key injuries, Dak going down, the Falcons have always messed with injuries, and now Chargers haven't had Derwin James on the field for, what, like, three games the last two years, or barely even that. You know, that, that really hurts your team because – some of those players, like those players, fill a big role and have to carry the team. Like Derwin James plays a significant part in that defense, and like you might be able to contend for a little while, but like at some point, your if your bottom end of your talent is not as is not good and can't keep up with the rest, then you're going to get shown, and that could be a big hole for why they blow away these leads late is because they don't have that one guy that makes a key stop or turns the tide of the table and comes up with a key interception, like a slot corner or something you never heard of. And that that's definitely a problem too. And that comes with drafting, uh, scouting, and just maybe some like key free agent signings they're just missing out on. And, you know, like also I feel like 
that's where a lot of teams are missing because you don't see that of the Ravens. We know the Ravens have a deep depth chart. Steelers are the same thing, always really good draft. And Patriots, I mean, Tom Brady era, I know they had the GOAT, but, like, also Belichick had deep depth charts. Like, come, like who knew about really Malcolm Butler before he made that interception against Seahawks? You know, like, it's just those teams get it right, and it's just always hard for me to – if being a fan of a team that just sees these teams consistently being successful is because their team in a whole is just well-rounded, not even the top end talent, but their bottom half of the team is not just as good, but it's playable. You know, you can trust yeah. these guys to step up and make a play when you can, because, you know, like, why would you want that? Like what's holding you back? Is that just scouting in the, fifth and seventh round you're just like saying screw it like we're not gonna get you one special i mean you can get a lot of stills in those rounds. i think it's probably organizational continuity that's that's holding that back the fact that um you know you look at the patriots they're probably one of the best ran organizations same thing with the steelers and ravens everyone's on the same page it's like a company you know you can tell a good company from a bad company you know when a good company everyone knows their role Everyone's on the same page. There's clear channels of communication. The the people at the top aren't aren't shit at what they do. You know they're very competent. Um, I, I think you know especially a, a team like the Jets. You know you can see the dysfunction. You can see that they okay, the there's end definitely end. incompetence somewhere. You know, and a lot of people point to Adam Gase, the head coach. You can't really deny that too much. So I think with the Chargers. There could be some incompetence somewhere in the organization, um, whether it's a, a certain player or, or staff members. Now, I, I think it's also hard for the NFL just because it's so ultra competitive. Just the slightest of advantages can make such a huge difference between a win and a loss. But And also, I didn't want to argue that, okay, the Chargers, like if you lose – starting players you should be able to have bench players that fill in and play just as well no like if you have a ton of injuries then you're going to get screwed no matter what but you have to be able to overcome a couple injuries here and there a couple problem spots here and there like you know you can't just rely on your starting caliber players to lead you to a championship it it is a 53 man roster at the end of the day and you need to have 53 guys that can play and the closer you are to having, you know, the more complete lineup where the next man up philosophy works, the better chance you have at, at winning a Super Bowl and having a contingency plan for when things go wrong. So I think we've I think we've shat on the Chargers enough. I mean, we kind of hyped them up a little bit. We kind of hyped them up. Um, I mean, let's get in. They got Herbert. Yeah, they got Herbert. I, I think the future is bright for, for the L.A. Chargers. I think that whether it's a coaching change or not, I think that they're in a really good position to, to I think, overtake the Rams as the team of L.A. Right now, the Rams have been the dominant team, not necessarily in terms of talent, but just in terms of results. I mean, the Rams were in a Super Bowl. They're, they're having a better season this year. Um, I think most people would argue probably everyone that McVay is the better coach. Um, the Chargers do have the better quarterback right now, it seems like, but I think the Chargers are in a spot to overtake the Rams. They just need to start clicking. Things need to start clicking for them. They need to find ways to win games, and if once they're able to do that, I think they're so close. Once they're able to do that, they can, they can be a force to be reckoned with in a really scary team.